Hi all, a really short intro here with my face to let you know it really is me that's doing the narration here in this uh, video recording of a shortened version of a workshop that I developed with my colleague Annette McNamara, whose name is on the screen. We'll use it for the module two, second week, focusing on atmosphere and in the readings presentation and your discussion work, make some connections between uh, motivation and atmosphere. And onward with doing the voiceover narration in the next few slides. There are two idiomatic phrases that I want us to think about, slang that we use in the classroom. One of those is, I really need to figure out how to light a fire under my students. And the other is, my class was on fire today. I want us to think more about how to do the second thing. Um, working with students and what we're studying together to have things feel like they're on fire really lively. I don't think it's our responsibility to light the fire under students. That presumes they have no agency, that they're just inert. So I want us to think about how things can come alive and light a fire. And part of that has to do with agency. This idea that teachers, learners work together to create knowledge. And teachers and learners work together also with materials that students might be reading or viewing or creating as part of that knowledge creation. And in that agency, teachers can have a role with planning the activities. And that's something we bring. We try to think about how something will motivate learners to engage with the day's topic, with the engage, engage with the day's readings or resources or activities we'll do in class. Learners also bring something. They come with a motive. They maybe have multiple motives, things they want to learn, things they want to do, a grade they want to um, uh, gain. Um, Maybe it's even attention within a class by saying something other people will pay attention to. And that's something they drew through their active engagement. They have to be there to be active. Um, their role is in preparing for, being part of, thinking about the activities. That third piece is really what we do together because we've planned and they've engaged in the activities. There's some knowledge that's getting created. And in that moment, we can assess what's going on. Take a look. Assessment doesn't have to be formal grading or taking an exam. It can be watching behaviors, reading language, trying to read language instead of minds can be a helpful thing. So having that in mind, that teachers and learners have to work together to generate motivation, just like we have to work together to create knowledge. I want you to be thinking about that as we head into the three chunks then that will follow in this presentation. All right, so motivation has three components and just like it has three kinds of agency represented by the image at the end, the teacher, the learner, and the knowledge they create together. In order to be motivated to do those things, teach, learn, create, there are these three components. And let's start with the one on aims over to the left on the screen. screen. Aims have value to students. That will help with motivation. It can be the whole course, it can be the specific aims, but it must have value to the learners. And we can help them understand that value by how we talk about the course that they're taking and the work that we're doing. The second key component is that learning and success feel possible. Students need to have a reasonable expectation that they can practice and learn how to do the work that they will later demonstrate mastery of. They need to feel like, and it's feeling that matters, feel like it's possible. Are there steps? Is it accomplishable? Will I get feedback? Um, and also that learning is possible, that this isn't such a big topic that they'll never master it, or it's starting at a level that they aren't at and have no ideas about how to get to. And that third element, it's at the top, not because it's, it's at the top, not because it's third, but because it's all encompassing. But it's often the third thing people think about, that it's a supportive environment, that their learning matters, that they matter as learners to the teacher and to each other. So three key elements for motivation, the aims, the course, the assignments, these need to have value for students. 
learning and success need to feel possible. They need to see evidence that it's possible that they can grow and they need to believe that they can grow in their learning, which is part of that supportive environment. To get you started thinking about this, I want you to turn to the James Lang chapter seven on motivation from his book, Small Teaching. Lang does a really nice job of talking about his own teaching, his children's learning, and what he's observed in teaching and learning in those circumstances to lay out motivation theory and also to um, really think through some practices we can do in the classroom. The end of the chapter has a nice wrap up, sort of a too long, didn't read, but I'm going to encourage you not to just go there and really take in his essay voice as you uh, read through this chapter. <laughs>